What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of A Playmaker's View. I'm your host, as always, Jamie Burdish. Appreciate you guys, as always, coming on today's episode. Today, we have a very special guest in Josh Fleming. If you guys don't know who Josh is, he is a uh, baseball player in the Tampa Bay Rays organization, making his way up very quickly. Uh, he was drafting, drafted back in 2017, so uh, we're going to learn a lot about Josh and you know how he gained his passion for the game. Um, and you guys should be able to learn a lot from him and just his story. So uh, without further ado, we can kick things off right away, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. All right, so we can kind of just jump right into things. Today's guest, like I said, is Josh Fleming. I appreciate you coming on, Josh. I want to start off with uh, kind of how you got into the game of baseball. Um, what was your driving factor? You know, at a young age, was there someone or something that kind of inspired your passion to play baseball? Yeah, um, I mean, I think growing up, baseball had always been my first sport that I truly fell in love with. Um, started playing at a really young age. My kind of got me into it. Um, he'd been my coach all the way up until high school, pretty much. So um, if there was one person that really kind of inspired slash drove me to that was, uh, was definitely my dad. Um, you know, him being my coach growing up was, was awesome. And, you know, it's just... I don't know, as a kid, just growing up, I, I always loved it, going to Cardinal games and everything. And so baseball was the sport that I, you know, fell in love with first. For sure. And did you know, like, at a young age, were you a pretty talented guy? Did you, like, were you at top of everybody on your team? Or did you have to kind of grow to where you're at today? Um, I mean, not to, like, toot my own horn or anything, but I always felt like I was, you know, one of the better players, yeah. you know, growing up with sure. just all the people around me. Um. I played a lot of different other sports too, so um, I had always been, you know, really athletic, and and I was kind of good at a lot of sports I played. So, for sure, um, yeah, I definitely like to think of myself as one of the better players growing up. Mm -hmm. So, what are th other things did you do growing up? You mentioned you played other sports. Did you play like football or? Yeah, so I played. You know, at one point I was playing football, baseball, mm -hmm. basketball. Um, I played hockey and I dabbled a little bit with golf too. So I was playing all sorts of different sports. Gotcha. Uh, so I want you to kind of, the next topic is uh, you being at Webster. So for the viewers, if they don't know, you attended Webster University. I want you to get into, first of all, how you got recruited and just touch on your time there. Obviously, uh, being a college baseball player is an awesome experience, uh, speaking okay. from myself. Uh, but where has that helped you? Has it helped you lead to where you are today? And I just want to kind of hear about your experience at Webster. Yeah. Um, I mean, first off in high school, um, I was overlooked. I was pretty small. Um, I didn't hit my growth spurt until say mid junior year of high school going into senior year. Um, you know, I was just a scrawny, like five, eight, just 140 pounds soaking wet kid going into my senior year. So I wasn't very big at all. Um, so I was overlooked by, obviously, the big schools and stuff. And, and Webster saw me at uh, a showcase. And, um, you know, I was one of the main schools, the only school, really, that was uh, recruiting at the time. And, you know, I did some research on them. And they were a top school, you know, top D3 program. So I was like, okay, like, this will be fun. And, you know, at that time, I was just really just wanting to play baseball. You know, I didn't, didn't care where it took me. Um, I just just wanted to play you know I enjoyed it that much to where it didn't matter what level I was at I just wanted to play um sure. and so I ended up going to Webster um in freshman year was really kind of like a breakout year for me I don't think I was expected to play a whole lot and uh like the first week of games I came out of the bullpen and did really well against uh Emory who was the number two team in the nation at the time and that was the first time I hit 90 miles an hour on the gun. My, And, I mean, before that, I had never even hit, like, 87, I don't think. So it was really just a big kind of wake-up call for me. I was like, holy cow, like, maybe I can make a living doing this and get to the next level. Um, and even my coaches reached out to me at that time, too. and was like, hey, you can do this, but you're going to need to eat and you're going to need to put on some muscle and everything. Uh, yeah. Because even after freshman year, I was – Six two, 160 pounds soaking wet. So I grew, but I was still very, very scrawny and just didn't, you know, have the muscle, didn't have the weight or anything like that. Um, 
so I was really pushed um, to to start eating better, start, you know, watching my body a lot better than I had before. Cause you know, like I said, in high school, I was just a scrawny kid. Didn't really think much of it. I was in a weightlifting class, but I didn't take it seriously because I was like, well, it's just an easy grade. So I didn't really think of it as anything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, my time at Webster was awesome. Three years I was there. Um, it was just, you know, the friendships I made were, were awesome. Um, I'm getting married in November and four of my teammates are actually going to be in my wedding. So yeah, it's, congrats. congrats. <laughs> it's awesome. It was, thank you. Thank you. Um, Webster was awesome though. Um, you know, I don't think anyone should overlook D3, you know, by any means, I think, you know, you're all, everyone's supposed to go what fits them. You know, you go to a place that is best fit for you, not necessarily D1 because oh, I can say I play D1. You want to go to a place that's best fit for you. Um, sure. and, and that's what I felt like Webster was, you know, I want you to kind of touch on that. Obviously there's a lot of people out there, uh, high school, not just baseball, but sports all over the place. Um, what is your biggest advice for people who are looking for a school? What can you touch a little bit more on what Webster did for you to make it feel right? And for, you know, kids that are trying to get recruited, how do you find that right school to hopefully get to that next level? Yeah. Um, you know, Webster was a place where, where the coaching staff was great. Um, you know, the, the teammates that I had going into my freshman year, you know, they made me feel right at home right away. So it wasn't like I had to, you know, talk to everyone to, to start to feel comfortable. It was like right away I felt comfortable. You know, the teammates were great. Coaches were great. Um, and, I mean, coming from a small high school, Webster's a smaller college, so it just felt – you know, kind of like home to me. Um, right. So that was great. Um, and, you know, just some, I guess, advice for, for kids, you know, wanting to play at the next level and stuff. I, I just don't think that, me personally, I don't think, you know, you need to go D1 if that's what, you know, you think just because growing up you hear, oh, it's D1. That's what you, If you go D1, you're going to get drafted. If you go D1, you know, that's where all the – really good players go and I I mean yeah to some extent that's true but at the same time um like I was saying earlier it's all um about what what place is best fit for you um you know you don't need to go to a huge school to stand out you can go to a smaller school and if you do you know amazing you're going to get seen regardless of where you're at you know you don't need to go to a big school just to get seen yeah um, how did you get seen? Uh, were you like at some sort of camp or scouting? Like how, how did you get seen from the scouts? Because, you know, being at a D3 school, you don't get as much attention as you're mentioning, but how did that work out for you? Um, so, you know, obviously I had a little help from, from my head coach, uh, coach courage there. He, he had some, some connections, um, of guys that he knew, I think playing when he was growing up who ended up becoming scouts and everything. And, and so he ended up giving some of them a call. Um, and, you know, it was like one indoor practice. There was like three or four. And then the next indoor practice, there were maybe five or six. And I think just through those connections that Coach Kirch had, you know, there was talk, you know, just talk from scouts to other scouts and like, hey, you, you got to go see this kid. Um, and so um, that helped me a lot. It was, it was kind of crazy. It was like, you know, my coach tells me, hey, there's going to be a few scouts here. I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like, inside, there was, like, five or six of them. And then there was, like, the next practice, there was, like, 15 of them. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, sure. But, uh, you know, my coach definitely had a big, big help in that just through the people that he knew. Yeah. What was that like for you? Was it kind of nerve-wracking to have those scouts, or did you just kind of play your game, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um. I mean, the first few times, it was definitely weird, you know, seeing – guys seeing scouts from from pro teams you know behind the net or wherever it was holding up radar guns I'm like I've never had this before so it was it was kind of weird um and definitely a little nerve-wracking at first but um I mean I think I, I just started thinking of it okay it's just a game just go out there they're just fans you know I just started thinking of those fans kind of blocked them all out um but yeah for sure all right we're gonna take a quick little trivia break I like to do two or three questions. Uh, so I dedicated this to kind of like the Rays because, you know, you're in their organization. 
Uh, but the first question I have for you, there have been two players drafted out of the SLEAC, which if you the viewers don't know, that is the conference that Webster and my school, Westminster, are in. So um, you are one of the two people. Can you name the other person that was drafted out of the SLEAC and when they were drafted? Oh, man. I know this player was from Bonbon. I think it was like 1995 or something like that. You got half that right. They are from Fontbonne, 1998. 1998, okay. I don't know the name, though. I do not know. It's Ryan Bauer. Ryan Bauer was uh, drafted in the 26th round. Um, I believe he only made it past, like, single-A ball, so hopefully, you know, you have a little bit more of an edge on him there. But that's pretty cool that, you know, you're one of the two people. So congrats on that. Um the second question is, what year did the Tampa Bay Rays enter the MLB? Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Gosh, I, I should know this. Um, I think I want to say it's, oh, it's, it's either 98, 99, or 2000. It's 98, yep, that's, that's what it is. is. So they're a fairly new team and, I mean, pretty good organization, yeah. some young players. Uh, I wanna, We're going to get into a little bit more about the organization as a whole in a little bit. But the last question I have for you is, in the Rays organization, who holds the record for the most wins by a pitcher? Most wins by a pitcher? Um, oh, man. Oh, gosh. Um, part of me wants to say it's Chris Archer, um, but I don't think it's Chris Archer. It might be like Matt Moore or maybe David Price. Uh, I actually thought it was David Price, but it's James Shields. James Shields has 87. Shields? Yeah. So he's a, he's well known in the Rays organization. Hopefully one day, you know, you can be up there in the ranks, but uh, we'll kind of transition over. Like I said, I want to talk about the Rays organization as a whole. Um, I want you to talk about your minor league experience and the whole spring training thing. What have you done uh, in the last few years with the Rays? Yeah, um, I mean, first spring training was was pretty awesome. Um, that was, you know, growing up and and I, you know I've been to some spring training games and stuff when I was younger, so that was really really cool. Um, just to to be a part of the spring trainings and everything, and obviously they they have a minor league spring training and the big league spring training. Um, this this year, I was in my first big league spring training, which was, you know, everything that I've heard about, everything that I've seen. It it was just awesome. It was the the experience was like none other. Um, you know, it was just really cool being around, you know, guys like Snell and and Charlie Morton and Austin Meadows, all the big league guys that, you know, since I've been in the Rays organization, I've, you know, seen so much of and heard so much of actually getting to meet them and be around them was, was very, very special. And it was one of the coolest things ever. Um, but, uh, you know, spring training is fun, man. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, and even minor leagues, um, the seasons, I know there's, you know, it's definitely a grind. Um, you know, being when I was in low A in 2018, um, you know, 12 hour bus rides up to Wisconsin for after a, after you just played a game and it ended at 10 o'clock and, you know, you're busing overnight. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a grind, but, you know, the seasons, it, it's 140 games. Um, so it it's long, but, you know, it it's a lot of fun and kind of like my time at Webster is just you make a lot of friends there. You know, the friendships are great. Um, and you start getting close to some of these guys and, and it's just, I don't know. It, it, it reminded me of college a little bit just cause yeah. you know, I'm going a new team that, you know, like as a freshman, um, going to a team that I don't know anyone on and everything like that and, and starting them, you know, make more friendships over that. I think, um, you know, it was really cool. A lot yeah. of fun. So when you were in spring training, were you able, I know it was cut short, but were you able to learn a lot of stuff from those veteran guys like Snell and, all those guys, I want you to kind of touch on, um, you know, your interactions with them and how that all went. Yeah. Um, you know, because it was my first big league spring training, I didn't want to go in and be that guy that just yeah. asked all these questions to, 
you know, to the veteran guys and stuff like that. So I just kind of sat back and just, I learned, for, learned by watching, you know, learned how, by watching how, you know, Morton, Snell, Kiermaier, uh, Glass, now how they just carried themselves around, um, you know, some of us younger guys who was our first spring training um, and, you know, how they treated us. It was, you know, they treated us just like any other, any other teammate, you know, it, it was like they'd known us for years. Um, so that was really, really cool um, to just sit back and, and watch how they, how they do that. And like, you know, when we do PFPs and, and, and just little drills like that, watching how, how hard and serious they take them and stuff like that. I think it's, it's really cool um, to see that. And, you know, they're not being lazy. They're, they're taking, you know, they take everything really seriously and stuff. But, um, you know, I talked with Snell a decent amount. We were in the same throne group. And so, um, you know, how he treated me was, was great. You know, he treated me just like one of his teammates that he's known for years. And, you know, I hope one day when I, hopefully if I'm in that position where, I'm seen as like a veteran guy can kind of do the same thing younger players coming up. Yeah, for sure. I I think that's awesome. Uh, The next thing I know it's, this is kind of like a hard topic to kind of talk about, but you were, you know, training to be, you were going to be in AAA, correct? Mm -hmm. So with, when everything kind of postponed, what, how have you shifted your training and, you know, like the mental aspect of it, how have you adjusted to everything? Because we don't, we still don't know when things are going to resume. So how has that been for you? Um, it's, yeah, it's a little tricky sometimes. Um, you know, luckily I have, uh, one of my teammates with the Rays actually, his name is Pete Fairbanks. He's from the St. Louis area as well. Yeah. Um, and so we, you know, we, we play catch every day. We meet up at, uh, at a local high school's field that is open. Um, we're able to throw on there every day. Um, we throw, now we're starting to throw two bullpens a week just to maybe as things get closer to, you know, us getting back to playing, um, just trying to get, keep ourselves ready and, and in good shape and stuff. Um, now, obviously, working out, it's been tough because gyms have been closed. Um, so a lot of body weight stuff that we've been doing. Uh, we do some kettlebell, kind of like weighted vest type stuff because um, we're limited, you know. Um, but trying to stay conditioned, too, by running a decent amount, you know, three times a week or so. But mostly after heavy days, like bullpen days, we'll run. Um, you know, sprint and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, it's tricky. You know, we, we don't know. For me, especially, I don't know because I'm not on the 40, man. I'm not part of the Players Union exactly. yet. I'm not exactly sure when, you know, things could resume. But I'm just kind of just trying to stay, I guess, game-like ready or spring training ready. Um, yeah. If and when we do get to go back, I think there'll probably be like an, another mini spring training where we'll start to be able to build up again and get ready for the season. So just trying to stay kind of in like spring training shape, I guess. Yeah, I, I just asked this because obviously like you're contending for a spot almost like, you know, you're like you said, back in college, like you're at Webster. Um, so I, I think that it'd be pretty difficult to, um, you know, stay mentally tough and physically tough because mm-hmm. – you know, you're still competing for that spot, and you were in a good spot before this all happened. So obviously, it's not the best turn of events. But I just wanted to hear how you were adjusting to all that. And um, so, are you are you a starting pitcher in right now? Or are you going to be a reliever? Yeah. Okay. Starting pitcher. Okay, so you kind of know your role, and like I said, we don't really know when all of this is going to resume, but hopefully, you know, hopefully soon. But uh, my next question, I I try to always ask this for people. Um, if you could relive one moment of your career, you know, it could be on or off the field. I always mm-hmm. like, so my district championship, when I got dogpiled, that's one of the best moments of my sports career. Is there a moment that you would like to go back to? And this can be whether you want to redo something or just relive it because it was an outstanding moment. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I think it's draft day. Um, that, I mean, that day was you know, one of the best days of, of my life. Um, you know, I had, because I knew, I kind of had an idea of what rounds I would be drafted in between. Um, I was able to kind of have like a, a draft party, I guess you could say. So I had a bunch of my teammates over, I had family, friends, all that and stuff. Um, and that was just, I mean, that was super special um, getting to share that with, you know, my teammates, my parents, you know, family, whatever, whoever was here. 
it was just awesome. Um, that's that's definitely one day that I would love to just kind of go back and relive um, because I, I, I have videos on my phone of it and stuff. And so I'll catch myself sometimes going back and watching them and, and just, it was just awesome. Just so awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's a dream come true. There's nothing like it for sure. I wish I could say right. the same thing, but uh, I mean, you never know. Um, so one of the final things, what is something that you've taken away from your whole experience um, just growing up, what is something that, you know, you really try to do each and every day to, you know, grow and get better? Um, I mean, for me, just, I, I try to work hard at everything I do, whether it's little tedious drills like PFPs and, and, you know, covering the bases, whatever it is, bunt plays. I just, you know, try to take those game like, um, as much as possible. Um, because when they do happen in a game, you're not going to be lollygagging to the ball or anything. You're going to be going at 100%. Um, and so I think that's like a key thing for me is just, I mean, taking everything game speed because that's, you know, in a game, that's that's how it's going to be. It's not going to be a super slow play. You're going to have to, you know, run. And, and I mean, you're going to be at 100%. So um, I think just taking things at, a hundred percent. And it's not necessarily being, you know, Tommy try hard, but just you you want to be ready for the game whenever that moment comes. Um, and you know, when that moment comes, you're, you need to execute the play, um, whatever it may be. So I think just taking things at a hundred percent, you know, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to be all serious about everything and, and, you know, getting mad at people who aren't, but you know, it's, it's, for me, like, I'm going to do this, whatever it is, at 100% because I'm trying to get better. I'm not trying to just lollygag around. Yeah, no doubt. I think that's a great message. I always like to try to get something in to, uh, you know, help the viewers out. But like you said, I mean, mm -hmm. you're you're almost there. You're AAA. So, um, first of all, I want to wish you luck because, you know, you're super close, and I'm sure you'll get there at some point. So, um, Thank you. unfortunately, like the situation that's going on, um, you know, mm -hmm. you can't really do too much about it, but I do want to thank you for coming on. Uh, there's a lot to yeah. learn from this, you know, just, you know, get after it, basically, uh, get up mm -hmm. every day and do it. And like you said, you didn't know you were going to be in your, the spot you were in. So you just really never know, uh, where you mm -hmm. can be. So that's a great message, but if you have any final thoughts, please feel free to, you know, give them. But if not, you know, we can kind of mm -hmm. conclude. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, from my freshman year, um, you know, I was always told if you're given an opportunity, take it and, and run with it. Um, and I think that goes for everyone who is in any sport, you know, not necessarily baseball. If, mm -hmm. if you're given an opportunity, um, you know, go in the game, whichever sport it is, make the most of it. Because if, you know, if you do well, it is, I mean, who knows where it's going to take you. You know, the, the possibilities are endless. So for sure. Yeah. All right, well, thanks. That's a, a great message. Um, I th hope you guys, the viewers, got a lot of good stuff out of this. Uh, please follow Josh. You know, I'll link his social media stuff below if that's okay with you, and you know, uh, you know, get, you know, gain your followers and all this stuff. But like I said, guys, uh, please stay safe out there. Take care, and uh, you know, we'll have more guests like Josh because this is what it's all about. You know, growing and developing. So. Appreciate you guys joining me today, and we'll be back with you guys next week on A Playmaker's View.